So I had planned a very special intro and some live shots in between this video, but all of my shots got lost. I have no idea where they went. I think they all accidentally got deleted during the filming of a very long episode that we were doing. It stinks. So here you can see that we actually were there. I promise I was actually there and I had something really cool planned out, but anyway, we'll just go back to the new edited version of this video. So the Headless Horseman in Dungeons and Dragons is a nail-biting encounter, just as it was in Washington Irving's Legend of Sleepy Hollow. The CR8 rider combined with the CR3 Nightmare used as the Dread Steed can be challenging for parties even as high as level 7. This encounter is considered deadly for 5 level 4 players and challenging for 5 level 6 players. However, before we build this encounter, I'd like to thank Miniocalypse for the idea on the Tabletop Dungeoneers Discord channel. I have express written permission from Stonestrix, he is the creator of the CR8 Headless Horseman, to use in this video, but I haven't heard from the artist Bob Kell, who does the artwork. So to be respectful for the artist, I won't show his work while using the images uh, with the stat block, but I will be using images from Creative Commons. I will attribute them in the description. I have a link to the stat block with the Headless Horseman with Bob Kell's artwork still intact, but for the purposes of this video, it will be blurred out, but still credited to him. Today's encounter is built on Astral Virtual Tabletop, a free VTT with a link in the description below. We are gold partners with them. We have five intrepid heroes walking down a path similar to the path in Sleepy Hollow, a path that I got to walk down myself. This encounter should happen at night, and if you want to stay true to the story, it's best for the PCs to be coming from a party or from a tavern. Now the players have been warned not to use this path at night. Legend has it that it has a soldier from a war well over a century ago that rides his trusty battle steed in search of his head that he lost in battle. He rises out of a nameless grave, antagonizing all who dare get in his way. The night is eerily silent. Just the gentle flow of the water can be heard and the rustle of the winds in the trees. The adventurers have been able to take care of threats in the past and they pay no mind to the tales of the dreaded horse rider said to haunt these very parts. No matter what their perception scores are, none of them are able to know that they are being watched. The bridge is in sight for the players not too far on the other side. There is a church where the players will be staying thanks to one of the players having the acolyte background. But then there's a rustle in the trees and the sound of thundering hooves fills the PC's ears and they turn around to see a ghostly figure atop the steed with eyes burning as bright as fire with the head of a pumpkin. Okay, so let's take a look at the stat block for this CR8 Headless Horseman. He's a mountain combatant with ride by and an AC of 15 and 153 hit points. He does have multi-attack and two different kinds of attacks he can do. The first being a Vorpal Longsword because <laughs> Of course he's got a Vorpal Blade, right? He has a plus 7 to hit and does 3d8 plus 4 magical slashing. If he crits and brings a PC to 0, he automatically chops off the head, which is one of the few ways, at least in 5th edition, that you can automatically die. He can also throw his pumpkin head with a recharge of 6 on a d6. He has a plus 7 to hit and does 2d8 plus 4 bludgeoning damage as well as 4d6 fire damage. The target must succeed a DC 15 con save or become stunned. Okay, DMs, this battle can be either hard or very hard. 
Level 4 and 5 players will find it challenging when the 60 foot speed of the Nightmare moves through all the players and can't be stopped. The Headless Horseman will ride through, attacking either one PC twice with his Whirlpool Blade, or possibly ride through multiple and attack two with one attack each. The players will have to whittle down the Headless Horseman with held actions, which, rules as written, only allow for one tack, because they'll have to hold their action until he comes by. Remember, with Ride By, even Sentinel can't beat his special mobility rules. Ranged attacks and single whittling attacks is what all you'll have to attack this special creature. With an AC of 15 and 153 HP, the Horseman will finally get brought down to zero, and it's helpful if the PCs can lock him up, or lock the horse up, or stun the horse with either a monk, ensnaring strikes from paladins, or ranger spells that make terrain difficult. Remember, the Dread Steed cannot fly over it. Okay, so yeah, that's fun, but how about we really piss off our players? The Nightmare has an action called Ethereal Stride. As an action, the Nightmare and the Horseman can enter the Ethereal Plane or come out of it. So the Horseman can come through just as normal and multi-attack, and then the Horse can move into the Ethereal Plane as its action. It doesn't matter how much attacks the fighter has, it doesn't matter what cool traps the PC set up, because the horsemen will vanish and the PCs will only be able to use readied actions every other round for when he reappears and runs back through him. The saving grace for these PCs is that the Nightmare must use an action to come into and out of the ethereal plane, meaning that every other round this Headless Horseman and the Nightmare is still stuck in the material plane meaning every other round, these players will have to dump all of their special tricks into the Headless Horseman to try to kill it fast, because all it's going to do is kite them until they all die. The Headless Horseman is an ambusher. He's best at attacking and moving as quick as he can and escaping. He'll do everything he can to kill the players until they make it to the church or they kill the Horseman himself. The PCs must beware, however, because the horsemen will probably attack them again. Maybe next time, the PCs will pay attention to the warnings. I like the stat block. It's a difficult encounter for multiple levels, and I think it's a good plug-and-play encounter if you want to spook something up for around Halloween time. I think the only thing I'd change about the stat block is that I'd probably call the horseman an undead creature and not a fiend. but. That's just me. It's up to you if you want to keep that or not. It doesn't really do too much to affect the game. I just flavor text would assume that the Headless Horseman would be an undead. But what do you think about the encounter? How would you run the Headless Horseman in your D&D game? Let us know in the comments below. Get ready for October 2021 as we will be bringing more horror themed videos multiple times a week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and game on.